What's up guys, it's Alex and today I've got a pretty cool video for you guys. Today we're going to be talking about fall topwater fishing. This is one of my favorite times of year to go out and throw a walking style topwater bait to catch some really, really quality fish. So pretty much what happens this time of year is there's a couple of factors that make topwater fishing a really effective tool to go out and catch fish. Number one is the length of days start to shorten and in turn the water temperature starts to cool down. When these two things happen, when those two factors start to kind of take effect, the bait fish instinctually start to move shallow. They start to move to the backs of the pockets because they're starting to feed up for winter. The bass in turn do the same exact thing. Their instincts start to kick in. They realize that the bait fish are starting to move shallow so it's time for the bass to start moving moving shallow and start eating on those bait fish and a lot of the times what you'll have is you'll have schools of bass or wolf packs of bass that corral those bait fish onto shallow flats into the backs of pockets onto shallow shell bars things like that and they just go to town on those bait fish and one of the best ways to mimic a dying bait fish or an injured bait fish is with some type of topwater. So that's why really the topwater can be such of an effective tool this time of year. So I thought I'd talk about some of the topwaters I throw, why I choose to throw those topwaters, the gear that I'm throwing it on, and kind of just give you some general rules of thumb to remember when it comes to hook choices, bait choices, color choices, and things like that. So hopefully you guys will enjoy today's episode. So let's get right into this video with bait choices and some of the, the colors that I choose when it comes to topwater fishing in the fall and kind of why I choose them. So number one is I always choose some kind of bait fish profile. So I know what you're thinking, Alex, you know, bait fish aren't the only things that bass eat and that is very true. They're very opportunistic feeders. So that means they'll eat bait fish, bluegills, crappies, ducks, otters. I mean, I really think a bass would eat about anything that it could get its mouth around. But because in a lot of the lakes in the country, there are so many bait fish, whether it be threadfin, gizzard chide, alewives, um, oh, I don't know, there's so many other different kinds of bait fish and there is such dense populations of them. A lot of the times the bait fish are what the bass are going to follow around and it's what they're going to eat and what's going to be their primary food source. So that's why I choose a shad pattern when I'm fall topwater fishing because that's really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for those schools of shad that have started to move shallow and I'm looking for those fish that are schooling on those shad and taking that opportunity while those shad are bunched up to gorge themselves and get ready for the winter. <clears throat> So that's one of the main reasons I choose some type of shad pattern. Um, I've got all kinds of topwaters here. I have a whole box of topwaters. I love fishing topwater, so I've got a bunch of different ones. Um, but just to kind of show you a few, you know, I've got your more clear, translucent, very natural patterns for your clear lakes. I've got your kind of semi-clear, sexy shad, um, shad mimickers. I've got your very bright chromes for your bright, sunny, bluebird kind of day. I've also got your normal bones and whites that also do a really good job of resembling bait fish. And here's just another, another example of kind of a bone color. Um, this has actually become my favorite top water to throw and my favorite top water color. And that is the Strike King Sexy Dog in Oyster. That just kind of bluish, um, whitish color does a very good job of getting a lot of bites and mimicking a ton of different bait fish. So, for the most part, I'm choosing those shad patterns this time of year just for the simple reason of that's, for the most part, what the bass are keying on. That's what they're eating. Those bass see an opportunity with the gizzard shad and the thread fin cause they're schooled so tightly to gorge themselves. It's a very easy opportunity for them to get some very high protein, protein rich meals in before it gets cold and they have to kind of go into that um, harder time of the year where there's not as much food, where they're not moving as much, where it's gonna be very, very cold. So focus on the shad patterns this time of year. Now for the locations I'm actually going and fishing, 
it can really, really vary because a lot of the times the shad are constantly moving. They're schooled up, they're moving throughout the lake. But this time of year, you know, we have them transitioning towards the backs of the pockets. So I really start early fall, kind of this time of year, you know, early October to middle October by finding where they're staging at. A lot of the times they'll stage right offshore or on a really shallow shell bar or rock bar or sandbar or something like that in a transitional area outside of the front of a pocket. And those bass, again, they're, that's where they're gonna be because they're taking that opportunity to eat. So you find those bait fish and then throughout the day they can move towards the back of the pocket, they can move towards out, out more towards main lake. It's really finding those bait fish and figuring out how to follow them. And then so what I'll do is I'll find those shallower areas, you know, whether it be the flat in the back of a pocket or the flat out in front of the pocket, and I'll just fan cast those areas with the top water. And I'm not working it real slow, I'm working it more aggressive, you know, um, really more erratic to try to get those bass to come up and eat that. Because what you're doing essentially is throwing a fake hamburger in the middle of the McDonald's and trying to get them to eat it. That's what that, that top water looks like. So you're one of gonna you're gonna wanna do something that makes that bait stand out and working it more radically, you know, working it harder, really getting that you know, killing it and then working it again real fast and killing it, it is gonna make that look like a dying bait fish or a fleeing bait fish and you're gonna hit those instincts of that bass to react to that bait. And you know, with this kind of topwater fishing, a lot of the times you're more getting those bass to react than you are, you know, trying to, like finesse them in or trying to you know they're not really getting a good look at it they just the instinct that erratic action that you know that real loud sound on top of the water it hits those instincts and they react to it and they eat it and that really is where I think a very key factor this comes in is the hooks that you're using. For me, there are very few topwater companies, or any bait company for that matter, that are putting hooks on baits that I really, really trust. So I really rely on two different types of hooks when it comes to topwater fishing and hard bait fishing in general. Number one is a round bend treble hook, and then number two is a EWG style treble hook. So there's really a couple of reasons that I pick either one or both depending on the situation that I'm in. I'm going to go more with the EWG style uh, treble hook if I'm around fish that are very, very committed to top water. They're very, very committed to the bait. They're very keyed in on it and when they're coming up, they're not slapping at it. They're not playing with it. They have one goal in mind and that is to eat this thing and get it to the back of their throat. When they're doing that, the EWG is key because a lot of the times, once you have that fish on that EWG hook it's going to be very very hard for them to shake it it's one of the reasons that i use it on my crankbaits in the winter time because a lot of the times even though i'm getting a reaction bite out of those fish they're eating it very very well and i'm sticking them really really good and i'm able to get them in the boat and it doesn't matter how much they jump or thrash they're not going to come off that ewg hook now there is one disadvantage to this hook and that is when the fish are not totally committed to it, when they're just slapping at it, when they're just trying to kill it. That EWG hook has just a little bit harder time of hooking them versus a round bed hook. That round bed hook has just a little more travel on it. And what that means is that shank is obviously round, it's a little bit longer. And so when they come in and they slap at it, and they slap at it real fast, that hook has a better opportunity to grab them versus that EWG. Now, I know what you're thinking, so does the round bend have, um, you know, more fault in it when it comes to those fish coming up and shaking and shaking the bait. Yeah and no. If you're running really good hooks, if you're running your gamagatsus, your owners, your things like that, you don't really have to worry about it because usually when you have those fish stuck good and you really got those uh, treble hooks buried in their face, which we're going to talk about gear here in a minute, how that helps, you don't really have to worry about them coming off. And you know, just when they're slapping at it, go with the round bend. When they're really committed to it, go with the EWG. So you just have that extra reassurance that they're not going to come off. Now, like I said gear plays a key factor in this as well. I feel like having the right rod and reel is really key to getting more fish into the boat with a topwater bait like this because essentially what you're fishing with is a floating crankbait and just like a crankbait you want to have a rod that has a lot of give that's a very moderate action that has a very good parabolic bend so that when number one those fish hit it that parabolic bend, that softer action, that more moderate action has a little bit of forgiveness. Even me, I've 
tried to train myself to not jerk when that fish eats topwater, but sometimes it just takes you off guard and you'll get that extra kind of twitch and try to set the hook on them before they really have it good. That moderate action allows it to just be a little bit slower. The reaction of that bait's just a little bit slower. So even if you do kind of jerk it, give it that premature jerk, the fish will still have an opportunity to get that bait really, really good. That moderate action also helps you to load that rod up very very smoothly it loads up really far down into the blank and what that helps you to do is drive in those treble hooks so no matter if you're fishing the ewgs or the round bends when you can get that moderate action you can really sweep into those fish and drive those treble hooks in versus ripping them out you're gonna get a really good hook in that fish and you don't have to worry about them coming off. Another thing that I do is I actually fish copolymer with my topwater. Some people like to fish braids, some people like to fish braid to leaders. I myself have found the copolymer, again, it's got a little more stretch, a little more forgiveness, so I'm able to drive those treble hooks home really, really well, get a good hook in those fish, and then once they're up next to the boat, that line's got a little more stretch. That in combination with that more moderate rod, it's gonna be a little softer, a little bit slower. It's gonna absorb those runs, absorb those jumps and it's going to keep those fish pinned so that you're not going to have fish coming off you're not going to be cussing and throwing stuff um, now when it comes to baits it depends on what i'm running in front of them some you tie directly to the to the line tie others you put on a split ring and go to the split ring to the line and then some I go split ring to snap. What the snap allows it to do is it has a little more free range of motion. It's a little bit easier to walk. It also has more free range of motion for it. So when that bass comes up shaking, you've got more leverage on the fish and the fish has less leverage on you. Um, but it all depends on how the bait reacts. So like these spooks, I actually go straight to the line tie because I found that they just work better when you go straight to the line tie. Um, something like this shower blows, I've got a split ring on there because they just walk a little bit better with a split ring on there and then the sexy dogs actually do a split ring and a snap because I found that's the best way to walk these baits um, then rod like I said you want to go uh, six nine to seven foot medium rod moderate action um, that way you've got a lot of bend a lot of parabolic bend it's going to absorb those fish and then I go 15 to 17 pound copolymer and a seven one to one gear ratio uh, lose LFS and you know it's just a quick reel you can pick up line if one eats it and runs at you you got plenty of line capacity there if you're throwing that 15 to 17 pound and all that in combination is going to put a lot of topwater fish in the boat this time of year and it's kind of been my go-to and my rod reel line combination that i go with when i'm fishing this time of year but as always guys thank you for watching if you've got any questions or comments please go leave them in the comment section down below if you're new to my channel make sure to hit that like subscribe and notification bell it'll let you guys know when i put out all of my videos also go down in the description i'll have the links to all the baits i talked about some of my favorite top waters some of my favorite colors i'll have links to my partners like g rod lose you guys can go check all that stuff out but as always you guys are sweet and thank you for watching Watching.